What's the haps? I'm Maroka, and today I'm going to be taking a quick look at Freedom Planet by Galaxy Trail Games. This is a game that thinks it was born in the early 90s. It's very, very heavily inspired by the old 2D platformers from the Mega Drive and the SNES era. And it's it, there's going to be a lot of things, references, styles, inspiration, a lot of ideas and mechanics from those kind of games that you'll look at and you'll be able to go, yeah, that came from that game. These guys have been very, very heavily inspired by the games of the era, and it shows through in its entirety. Let's have a look at the options menu before we get into it. We have a difficulty, which is kind of, in modern day and age, it's kind of an odd place to put it, but if you gain, if you think back to kind of Mega Drive era games, often they would put the difficulty on the option screen. Given that we have save files and you'd expect the difficulty to be picked at game start rather than through the options menu, it still seems odd, but perhaps keeping with tradition was more important for them. Screen size, it's a pixel art game, you can see that already. As is the case with many pixel art games, the way it works is they just kind of scale up, so it's just twice the size or three times the size. At three times size, I'm running 1278 by 720 which is almost exactly the resolution I would like to record at. So, there's that. Uh, I guess it might go higher if you had a bigger monitor. My monitor probably wouldn't be big enough to do four times resolution, so mine stops at three. But music volume is on a slider, we can turn that up and down. However, there's no options for sound effects or voice acting, and it seems like those would, be, would have been good things to include. And they do not, unfortunately. Controls are rebindable, you can play with the keyboard or with a gamepad. It's kind of, you know, it's your old school platform, it's inspired by Mega Drive stuff. I'm using a gamepad because, you know, it seems appropriate for that kind of game to me. Uh, we have sensitivity, it can be changed on the joystick, which thank god for that, because mine is super sensitive and if I can't turn it down, that's that becomes problematic. So I'm glad that I can turn that down, that's nice to see. So let us head on into the game proper. We have a few options. I've started two games that I am... Um, there's a bit of a graphical glitch going on there apparently, but okay. We've got... I've started two games with the two main characters. There are more characters than this that you will unlock further down the line. We've got Lilac, who is a dragon, and we have Carol, who is a wildcat. They both play differently, they both have different abilities, and even the story diverges slightly. I played through the first couple of levels with each of them, as you can see I put about an hour into each of them. I kind of don't want to play much more, I'm actually very very tempted to do a full LP series of this, so I don't want to spoil too much more of it for myself. So I will start a new game from scratch, if we go into there, there's the adventure where that's supposed to appear. That was a little bit of a bug, hope that one's ironed out by launch, this is still obviously a slightly early build. We got... Adventure mode gives you the full story, voice acting, cutscenes, what have you, stuff that you'd never have seen back in the day, presumably mostly due to, you know, hardware limitations, you couldn't have had full audio particularly well and there wouldn't really have been space on the on the cartridges to put that kind of stuff in. But we have no such restrictions these days, so we've got huge cutscenes and full voice acting, which is really kind of cool. And if you just want to go back and play it like it would have been on the Mega Drive, you've got classic mode, which is going to go... Play a stage, play a stage, play a stage, go through the game in order, skip all the guff in between. But I'm gonna go show I'm gonna show you adventure mode because I do like the cutscenes, I wanna show you some of that. So we're going to adventure mode. And we've got this. Here we go. A bit of an intro for you. I can't wait! This is gonna be the best charge up ever! Just take from the rich, okay? Got it! You swear? Pinky swear! Huh? <gasps> Where are you going? I have to make sure they're okay. Can't you be Little Miss Hero Pants some other time? Not a chance! Fine, I'll go by myself. B. So there's our two main protagonists, and they're rushing off to go to the rescue. So I'm going to show you, I'll probably show you, I'll see if I can show you a little bit of both characters because that way I can show you a bit of the variety. But we'll start with Lilac. She's very, very heavily inspired by Sonic, I would have said. She runs really, really fast. Although actually, to be fair, there are elements of Sonic in Lilac. Hell, okay. Let's be honest, there are elements of Sonic everywhere in this. It's all Sonic. She's kind of got this melee attack with B. If I double jump in the air, I can do the cyclone attack. And then on X... I can kind of do this charge attack, which that is so very, very Sonic-y. But at the same time, if I stand still and press up and do it, you kind of got that, which 
Also, that one that one makes me think of uh, games like uh, Rocket Knight Adventures, which again get a similar kind of game from the same era. They're very much wearing its influences on its sleeve here, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because. Hell, I love those kind of games. So the idea that someone would, you know, go out of their way to make something very similar to that in this day and age is pretty cool. So we've got this blue meter in the top which is tied to a lot of our attacks. So when I double jump, that's going to drain that slightly. The longer I stay in the air spinning, that's going to drain. And when I do a charge attack, that's going to drain it quite considerably. So kind of got the charge attack is kind of our main special heavy attack. And we've got the leaves underneath the red are our health. If we pick up these, they will restore it. If it's full, I will just collect blue gems. The blue gems are effectively the equivalent of, well, they're your main collectible. It's like rings in Sonic. Uh, they will give you extra lives if you collect enough of them, as you would expect. For some strange reason, it's kind of got this weird counting down mechanic. You start with 200 and each gem you pick up, that number goes down. When that hits zero, you get an extra life. And yes, they have a life system. I don't know why there's a life system. This is not a day and age in which we need a life system. But it's in there. So just staying true to the classics, I suppose. So let's get some speed up. Like I say, I can't... I think uh, perhaps... Um, what's, her, what's her name? Carol probably moves a little bit faster than Lilac. Lilac's got a lot of maneuverability with her jumping and dashing and stuff. But Lilac's... Lilac... Um, no, sorry, uh, Carol has a motorbike. I mean, you saw perhaps back there there was like a tank of petrol, or gas, if you want to call it that, uh, that you could grab. And if you pick that up, Carol will get onto a motorbike and start riding around the level really crazy fast, and you can, like, run up walls and stuff. And it's all a bit insane. It gets pretty, it gets pretty fast paced in places. We've got things to break, which will give us invincibility, which is a very familiar looking effect. Get different music and it all goes sparkly, and we get invulnerability. There's so many mechanics. There are loop the loops, and we've got these, and come on, that's just lifted straight from Sonic. There's that gas can I was talking about. Petrol gas, whatever we're calling it. Different strokes for different folks, I suppose. Different people want to call it different things. So yeah, you can you can see where the influences are. It's obvious through and through. And Honestly, it's a lot of fun. It does play really, really well. You've got... You've got a lot of great mechanics that play very nicely, and the fact that each character has got their own different abilities gives them different ways to explore the levels. In a little while, as I say, I will show you some of Carol's stuff, because uh, Carol has a, has a bit of a wall climb ability, so in many respects, very, very similar to Knuckles in that regard. I haven't seen any kind of Tails character particularly, but it would not entirely surprise me to learn that there is one. As I say, there are more characters than just those two as well. Later on into the game, uh, when I initially got my first build, they weren't unlockable. I can get them now, though. There's uh, Once you've beaten the second level, another character becomes available. And I know there's another one which will become available even later on into the story. Uh, which is kind of a weird duck alien thing which has a gun. So, I've got a tough boss kind of thing. I wonder if that might be of use. No. I think I'll be best off. And with a lot of enemies, the, the spin attack kind of is fairly OP, because you can just hit things repeatedly with it. I'm gonna die if I'm not careful, so I should probably grab this health that's down here. Yeah, let's do that. Stay alive, why not? So that would suck to die five minutes into the story. But he's down, he turns into gems, because why not? And then we collect that and move onwards. The levels are pretty long, actually. They, So far, the first couple of levels I've seen are each 20 to 30 minutes long. They're broken up into lots of stages. You don't kind of get anything like specific acts or anything. Like you got, you, you know, you know, you like your Sonic uh, Zone 1, Act 1 and whatnot. It just kind of keeps going until you get to cutscene and then the cutscene will denote, you know, level 2. You'll know when you're on the next level. And you do get a few different styles and themes within the level, so level 2 has got a few different areas that are all different to each other. There are, yeah, as with the gas can, you've got like these things on the floor below, these are there's different mechanics that are only available to different characters, so that's going to be a Carol only thing. So, there's no particular things within the world specifically that I think Lila Quinn can particularly interact with that no one else can. That also seemed a little buggy, that levitated for a moment there. So. But she, you know, she's got quite a lot more maneuverability than everyone else, so I think she she has our own, she doesn't need, particularly need to interact with the environment to gain the maneuverability. These kind of offer an alternative, different kind of play style. So where where I can double jump, 
Carol would be able to grab onto these, and they can dash. She can she can dash between the different pa the red panels. So I think you might be getting you might be getting a feel for Lilac here. So I might uh, stop this for a moment and take a look at Carol's stuff. So we got there's a shield as well. Of course there are shields. There. Are, Again, I think Sonic overall has been by far the main inspiration for this. There's so many elements of this year you play, and it's like, that's Sonic, that's Sonic, that's Sonic. This is all Sonic. This is what this is. We've got shields. There is even, from uh, Sonic 2, I guess it was, there was even a magnetic shield in there somewhere which attracts the gems when you go near them, just like it did with the rings. Uh, for some reason, this shield can take more than one hit, it seems, though, so at least that's different. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, because obviously, they just don't make them like this anymore. This is just so different to anything any other studio is producing these days. I think it I think it stands out just by virtue of the fact that they don't they just don't make them like this. They really don't. Now this, oh, that's not one of those jets. This is a boss. Let's fight the boss. This guy's, this guy's fairly straightforward. Let's go take the gold chunks off of him and... And then eventually he will... It's kind of a mini boss, sort of a mid stage kind of mini boss kind of deal. Not really terribly tough. So he's out of there. And there we go, then we carry on. There is, There are some proper bosses later on which are actually considerably tougher, yeah. But for now, these guys aren't too bad. Mid stage stuff. So, that's a quick look at Lilac. So, if I pause the game, which is obviously bound to Y and not start, I suppose I could rebind it, so it wouldn't. Be, you know, that would be a thing I could do. Uh, let's uh, let's quit out. Uh, let's take a quick look at our other character. Uh, presumably, only saves the game if you um, finish if you finish a level, maybe. Because that hasn't saved my progress there. It's perhaps not a bad thing. So we've seen the intro cutscene. I don't particularly need to see it again. So let's just jump into classic. Oh yeah, we have Miller as well. I haven't actually tried Miller yet, so I don't actually know how she plays. If I go into that, I will be going into it blind. Let's take a look at Carol. As I say, quite, quite empty to do a full Let's Play through this afterwards, so... Stay tuned to my channel if you wish to see more of this, because there's bound to be more of it. I'm liking it a lot. So, as a wild cut, we have Claws, Claws of Fury. Uh, where where Lilac would whip her hair and kind of attack like that. We this go got this, which is a slightly weaker attack, but probably a little faster. We've got a sort of a, kind of a sideways dash instead of a double jump, which is less effective. If I'm running, I can press down and spin into a ball, which is a very familiar looking maneuver. I wonder where I've seen that one before. And then if I hold, what, we're, what would have been my charge attack, it, when, if I hold down X, I can do a flurry attack, which will drain all my power in no time at all, but it, it will do quite a lot of damage. It's a good way to kill a lot of the tougher enemies. So as you see, yeah, where I could one shot these guys, it's going to take a few hits from my claws here. The blue gems do, in fact, uh, recharge your meter a little faster. If it is depleted, grabbing the blue gems will speed up a little bit, but it ch tends to recharge fairly quickly. It's very, it's very rare that you're going to particularly be relying on using that tactically to, you know, actually make that happen. There are, I do like that there are multiple paths through the levels as well. These levels, they do seem to branch quite a lot. You never kind of get locked into a position where you're kind of stuck on one route. You can explore quite thoroughly, and I do tend to, tend to end up doing that. Which means I probably spend far longer in each level than I'm supposed to, but... As, I, as you see, I'm backtracking here now, where I probably was supposed to just grab that ladder over the other side. But there's so many routes through that you can, you can just take a different path each time, and... You'll see lots of new stuff, quite frequently. Yes, definitely came this way before, so that's my invulnerability! I remember that one. So, so I'm not sure which way I went before. I think I probably went through those bricks, did I? So let's try going up here. No, I definitely did come up here. So let's try going through the bricks, because that's a different route. Can I get through here? Am I allowed through here? Oh, if I do the spin dash, I can do that. Sure, okay. And yeah, I think I probably came this way with Lilac anyway. Oh no, there's a life here. That's a new thing. So you... Yeah. There are, there are hidden things, there are secrets, there are things to find, and it is worth exploring in that regard as well. And of course I can wall climb as well, which is going to get me to new places that I couldn't previously have done. So instead of taking the spring, I can just kind of do that and get up that way. So there are going to be areas that only I can get to. Oh yes, excellent. There we go. This is the motorbike I was talking about. For some reason, uh, I've kind of got this rather strange way of riding it in as far as, you know, I can like spin with it. 
Seems like a rather reckless way of riding a motorbike, but whatever, I won't judge too much. We can ride up damn near any surface. I can do my attacks from there. I can't... I, I, get, a I get a speed boost instead of the charge attack if I do multiple attacks. Uh, we've got these badges, which are a bunch of collectibles to find. They're just going to get some pretty, pretty things in the art gallery in the menus. Don't know if I can get up there. I probably can, but I'm not too bothered. That's going to be some health, so let's grab that. Each character has just got so many different mechanics that have different styles and things involved. That it really does feel like you're playing something entirely else, just by just by changing up characters. And as I say, there are four of them. And I think I think the fourth one does indeed have a gun as well, which I can I can only imagine would change things dramatically further again. It seems like something I would like to try out. It's all pretty cool. There is a lot to like about this game, particularly if you're a fan of. The old school type stuff. Eventually my motorbike will break, so I should probably... Yeah, there we go. I was thinking I should heal it. I have no idea if there's a way to heal your motorbike, to be fair. I can do that in midair, which is going to do a lot of damage. You can do that, and that's, a pretty, that's not a bad way of taking out a lot of bosses. You can deal a lot of damage pretty quick with the uh, big old claw attack. But if you spam it too much, you are, of course, going to run out of charge. I am liking the music as well. The music's kind of... Oh, you see, it's made by the same guy who uh, did the music for Bunny Must Die, Chelsea and the Sev Seven Devils. Anybody is familiar with that one? I have tried that one, so I am familiar with it, and it, it's a great soundtrack, so I will let you listen to a bit, for a bit of that if you want. is very cool and as again like everything else in, in the game it's keeping with the style of the era the kind of the kind of games it's trying to emulate it's it's that kind of soundtrack it's a great it's it's a lot of fun to listen to if they if they're gonna if they sell it separately i will be investing in it i think because it is a fantastic soundtrack i'm enjoying it a lot as i say there is a lot a lot, a lot to like about this game it does look beautiful and the soundtrack's fantastic, and the gameplay just really works well, and there's a lot of variety. So I do think this is probably going to be one of my favourite games of the year, I would say. So this is out today on Steam, if you want to check that out. This is available for $14.99, or your regional equivalent. I, I, at this point in time, I actually have no idea if they're running a launch discount. That still seems to be the prevailing trend with the games these days, so they might be available slightly cheaper than that. But uh, the standard retail price is going to be $15. So I can do that with this guy. Let's finish this guy off and then we'll call that, a bit, uh, call that for the day, I think. Just because you want to see how this boss is fought with Carol, I suspect. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe that's the thing you want. It's fairly easy, to be honest. As I would say, that claw attack is quite effective. <laughs> but I think that'll do that for now. So thank you very much for watching. I have been Maroka. This has been Freedom Planets, and you should totally be checking this out. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>